Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for being here for Fat Friends Friday. So happy to have you today. Um, just to get us started, my name is Jane. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a chemical engineer. I'm going into my fifth year here at UT Austin. So not a civil architectural or environmental, but a student nevertheless. So maybe I can help answer some of your questions. But mostly today, I'll just be moderating and handing the questions over to our incredible panel full of civil architectural and environmental engineers. Before we get started on the actual content of the panel itself, I'm going to drop some links in the chat. Give me one sec. That should be all of them. So the first link is a link to our WEP YouTube channel. WEP is the Women in Engineering program here at UT Austin. And our, our YouTube channel is a wealth of knowledge. We have playlists from alumni, from current students, from engineering friends all across Texas. And we answer tons of questions, whether it's about like student life or engineering careers, all that kind of thing. So that is a great place to go if you're just wanting to hear from a real person. The next link you'll see is the Fab Femmes database. That's basically a national database full of women in STEM careers. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So if you're wanting a mentor or somebody to like answer your weird career questions or somebody who shares your identity and you just want to talk to them more, go on Fab Femmes, make a profile with your interests and like what you're thinking of doing in your future. And you can link up with a role model there, start networking, start meeting those incredible women. And then the final link you see there is a Google spreadsheet. Um, I've been working on that spreadsheet myself, so I can testify it is absolutely massive and it's full of questions and answers from real engineering students, just like all of us. <laughs> um, so if you have some kind of question, even if you think it's really niche and nobody else has that question, I'm sure it's already in there. It's already been answered, so you can find it there. So all super helpful resources to make use of outside of this webinar, but at least for right now. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, every week we do a Fab Femmes Friday until the end of July. They all focus on different types of engineering here at UT. And today we're focusing on civil, architectural, and environmental engineering. We have a dream team of panelists here for you. So let's get to panelist introductions. Um, I'll ask each of you to share your name, pronouns, um, your major and year in school, or if you've graduated, then tell us what you're working in, what company or field. Um, and then hometown or where you're from right now, where you're zooming in from. And lastly, something that you enjoy doing outside of the world of engineering. Let's kick it off with Maya. Hi, y'all. I'm Maya. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a fourth year environmental engineering student. Um, I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas, and I really, really love just going outside and soaking in the sun. That's my thing to do. <laughs> I'm Pauline. Uh, I also use she, her pronouns, and I just finished my fourth year in environmental engineering, and I'm graduating in December. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Grad school, industry, who knows? Um, but I'm in Austin, and I just went to Einstein's and got myself a 50% off breakfast bagel. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Sarah. I will be a junior architectural engineering student. Um, I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, oh, my pronouns are she, her. And outside of school, um, I really like keeping up with Texas sports like football, volleyball, our baseball is playing right now. So that's really fun. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Samia Saraj. I graduated from UT in 2014 with my PhD in civil engineering. My pronouns are she and her. And my hometown is in Bangladesh. Uh, the city is Dhaka. And currently, I'm the CEO of A Better Force, which is a professional and leadership training company in Austin, Texas. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Kelly Mullins. I, am, I graduated in 2019 from civil engineering. Uh, I currently work as an engineer with Exxon Mobil. And um, okay, what else did you ask? I live in Houston. Um, that's where I work for Exxon. And outside of work, I actually take dance classes here in Houston as like my fun de stress activity. So, yeah. Awesome. So, we have a wealth of knowledge on our panel today. So, make use of the QA function. 
I'll have a few set questions to ask first, just so that you can learn a bit more about the panelists, but then we'll turn fully to all of your questions. So send them in the Q&A. If you send them in the chat, I might see them, but I'll definitely see them in the Q&A function. If we don't get your questions answered today, they will be added either to the Google Sheet, to our YouTube channel, to our Padlet if you're a summer camp participant, so somehow you'll get them answered. So now that you have all of the background info you need, we'll get into the first question. This one is for Kelly and Samia, and it is, what made you decide to pursue civil engineering, and can you share a little bit about your work in this field? Sure, I can go first. Um, so for me, I really went the kind of the construction route at UT when I was in civil engineering. And what made me go into civil engineering initially was just that I really wanted to go into a field where I could have an impact. And I felt like I, growing up, I always really liked science and math, particularly physics. And so I wanted to go into civil engineering specifically because it didn't have a lot of chemistry, which I didn't like, and it didn't have a lot of coding or <laughs> um, you know, anything like that. I really wanted to focus on more of like the structural physics side of things because that's where I felt like um, my strengths lied. And so I um, kind of went that civil engineering route. As I was at UT, I really liked construction. I liked the idea of doing project management because it was really um, super multifaceted. You mean, you kind of have the technical side of it, but then it's also like looking at schedule and cost. And so I found that really interesting. And that's what I actually um, took me to go work for ExxonMobil. I hired into their project group as um, a cost engineer. So I was doing kind of like estimating work when I started. Now I'm doing something like totally different. I'm actually working as a product manager. Um, so I work with a team of 10 software developers on developing an internal application. So I am building this um, basically internal software for people to use, the other engineers to use within ExxonMobil. And so that's been totally different because I have to learn all about software development and I work with users and I'm doing like user experience research and it's just super new to me, but it has a lot of the elements of project management in terms of just, you know, interfacing with different people, focusing on schedule, trying to prioritize the decisions that are made on the product. So that's been really cool, um, but totally, totally new for me. And uh, I really like it. I think I kind of want to pursue more of a technology-based field moving forward. So for me, I grew up in uh, Bangladesh, which had a lot of natural disasters. Uh, we almost yearly, we had a lot of flooding and we had hurricanes as well. And growing up, I saw how the lack of infrastructure can really affect your quality of life. And so I really wanted to pursue civil engineering because I felt like you could make a direct impact on people's everyday lives, you know, with the things that you were building. And, um, and part of the thing that I love about civil engineering is it's so broad. Um, you know, Kelly was talking about how she didn't like chemistry, but for my PhD in civil engineering, I was actually working with cement chemistry. So it, you know, it encompasses a wide range of subjects and fields and, uh, you know, you can really find your niche. Um, after uh, after finishing my graduate degree, I also went into construction, uh, but what I was working on was looking at material quality uh, on sites and setting up standardized testing uh, for, you know, the concrete that they were using. And I also started looking into um, construction safety. I was actually working in Asia where the standards are different than what it is here and one of the things that I was doing was transferring uh, American standards of safety and quality to construction sites uh, back in Bangladesh. Uh, when I was there, I started seeing how a lot of the problems encountered in companies uh, had non-technical solutions, and it was actually more on the lines of management and communication, things that sometimes um, we are not taught uh, while we are learning all the technical things in school. And so after I finished off my uh, project uh, in Bangladesh, I started uh, my own company, which is uh, called A Better Force. 
And we actually work with individuals and companies, um, helping them with their professional development, doing management consulting, helping them with their communication uh, and leadership training so that, you know, the company and uh, their employees can thrive both in their personal and professional lives. Wonderful. Thank you both for sharing. The next question is for our environmental engineers, Pauline and Maya. Kind of a similar question. Um, what made you decide to major in environmental engineering? Like what interested you about that field? And after you get the degree, what work do you think you would like to do with it? Sure, um, I could start. So I kind of chose, I actually came into UT as a geosystems engineer, which is in the petroleum school. And I had chosen that major originally because it sounded like it was a lot of field work and like, I don't know, environmental stuff. It sounded really interesting. And then I got to UT and it kind of was like basically just a replica of the petroleum degree. And I realized that's not what I wanted to do. And so I transferred out after my first semester. Um, and so I did kind of want to, like apply to environmental engineering, but I ended up putting geosystems engineering first. Um, and I just chose those in general because similar, like I knew I wanted to do something like math and science related. Um, and I did really like chemistry, um, just kind of answering like that second question. Environmental engineering is somewhat chemistry heavy, but like you'll learn if chemistry is like tough for you, like don't get too like scared off because you'll learn the chemistry you need to know in your environmental engineering classes if you haven't learned it in the chemistry classes or even if you have learned it in the chemistry classes like it's the same with physics um like physics is really hard for me but i didn't end up struggling too hard in the actual environmental engineering physics classes or like when i need to use physics because they would like reteach you it um and then what i want to do after you know, that's a great question. I did have an internship um, in consulting, which is a pretty similar career path for like civil architectural or environmental engineers. And that's like where you, consulting is like such a weird word because it can mean anything. But like in this context, it's like you're working, I worked like with the city of Austin in like developing projects um, related to like their wastewater treatment plant. So like they were renovating a section of their wastewater treatment plant. We were the engineers contracted by the city to do it. So you're like kind of working with the government and like with other people designing stuff and like figuring out kind of also con like construction construction and management stuff like that. Um, but I do know other people who are going to grad school and going into research and stuff like that. So there's kind of a, a wide range of things you can do. But yeah. Um, I decided to do environmental engineering after um, my hometown had like three water boils in the span of 18 months. It was a fun time. And I was like, hmm, this sucks. And Corpus is like a pretty, overall a pretty like medium sized city. Like we have almost 400,000 residents. And it's like, if, that's, if this is happening here, what's happening in like the small towns with like 10,000 people? Or like what's happening in places where there's a lot less community and there's a lot less industry that's putting money into the city. So I decided to do environmental engineering related to water and water systems and um, water treatment. And hopefully I'll get to do a job regarding that. I'm also thinking about doing like if um, science communication, because I feel like science communication and science policy go hand in hand. And in order to get people to understand what you're telling them and to get them to trust you with the projects that you wanna do, you have to like actually explain what you're doing. So hopefully that's the route I'm gonna go. I really don't know, like Pauline, maybe grad school. Um, I still have time. <laughs> awesome. And finally, same question for Sarah, our architectural engineer. What made you interested in architectural engineering and what are some of the things you're thinking about doing after you graduate? Yeah, so whenever I first was looking into the different like options for engineering, I definitely was kind of drawn towards civil because everyone kind of has a good idea of what civil architecture or what civil engineering is, you know, it's concrete and roads and stuff like that. But 
Um, but then I saw architectural and I knew that I liked buildings. Um, we did some construction, like a Habitat for Humanity type thing at my high school. And I knew I liked that and I liked the, the buildings. And um, it, I, th I thought it was really cool that UT offered a, like a more specific kind of degree. It's like really similar to civil, but um, it's just buildings and, or mostly buildings. Um, so that was really interesting to me and it had a more design heavy um, course load. Like we take some, like a kind of studio class. Have you ever looked into like architecture programs? Um, they have really heavy <laughs> design and um, they make models and stuff like that, which I was kind of interested in, but I didn't want to do like a five or six year program to do architecture. Um, and then after I graduate, um, I don't really know quite yet, like everyone else, but um, I think I want to go either into industry, and I'm also thinking about going into like higher education, like um, doing advising or um, like working for WEP or a program like that, and um, just kind of exploring my options still. But. Okay, great. Thank you all for sharing just kind of like why your field interests you, what you want to do with it. Um, the next question I have, and this is a really common question, I've already seen it in the Q&A, is that all three of these majors, civil, architectural, and environmental, are in the same department. So how much overlap is there between the three majors? So for example, if you like started in civil and then you get into it a little bit and you realize, I want to switch to environmental, um, would you already be taking like similar classes? Is there overlap there? As well as after the you know, degree program itself, is there overlap between careers in those fields? And that is open to anybody. Yeah, I don't, I'm not too sure about architectural, but environmental engineers and civil have a lot of overlap in their classes. Um, any engineer is basically taking the same classes first year. Like we all have to take calculus, chemistry, physics, um, UGS courses. So we're all taking those. Um, and then like your second year and maybe like your second semester, first year, you're gonna take like more classes specific to your major. Um, EVEs take a lot of classes that are called like civil engineering because EVE is a was a really new major. Um, and so they're still kind of like making more classes because originally what you did is you did two years of civil and then you could like specialize in environmental. Um, so we're taking like a lot of those classes that um, civil engineers used to take. Um, and I actually have taken an AR, an architectural engineering course, which you can take like as an elective in your junior and senior years. Um, so I would say there's definitely overlap at UT. And for sure, when you go get a job, like, like I said, so there's like electives in your junior and senior year where you can choose from a list of classes you want. So like, if you're really interested in, in structural stuff, even as an environmental engineer, you can take more like structural classes. Um, and the same goes for like architectural interested in environmental stuff or civil, um, anything like that. I can answer the career a bit. I think right now the world is so connected. You know, you can really start somewhere and find yourself moving towards a totally different field. For example, my sister did both her undergrad and master's in environmental engineering. And she was doing a lot of computer modeling uh, for environmental data. And she got uh, poached by the psychology department. And now she's doing her PhD in psychology. She's doing the exact same work. She's modeling data. But now instead of doing environmental science, she's modeling data on heartbreak, on the Black Lives Matter movement, on social, on different social sciences. So the world is really connected. I think just take the first step, take whatever feels right. And then as you learn more, you know, you can transition and switch to finding your niche. Okay. Um, yeah, I hope that answered it. There are some differences between it, but really engineering in general, even if you're outside of this department, there's tons of overlap with all different kinds of engineering majors. Um, this next question is for Sarah, and it is about one of our leadership collaborative and WEP, uh, Women in Civil Architectural and Environmental Engineering, or WCAE. So Sarah, can you tell us a bit about WCAE? What is it? What kind of things do you all do? How did you get involved in it? 
And what are some of the things you're looking forward to as a uh, officer this coming year? Yeah, so um, once again, we're WCAE Women in Civil, Architectural and Environmental Engineering. Um, we're under web, uh, where there's kind of um, an organization for each like major, like there's women in mechanical engineering, women in biomedical, et cetera. So like we're for civil, architectural, environmental. Um, and we host um, professors come speak to us. We have companies come tell us about what they do. Um, we have workshops and socials. Um, and it's a good time um, where I kind of like WCAE, especially because we're a little bit smaller, we're all a couple of the majors are pretty small. So um, it's a real community, like we can all kind of know each other, we all <laughs> hang out and we bring our friends and there's free food at all of our meetings, which is my favorite part. Um, <laughs> but I've been an officer with them since freshman year, um, we always um, elect a freshman um, as an officer um, to give them a leadership op opportunity. And um, that was really cool. And I've been involved with them ever since. And I'll be the president this year. So it's been really exciting to work with WCAE and kind of develop it as we're kind of a little bit newer organization um, since adding architectural environmental. But um, yeah, this year I'm really excited to be in person, obviously. Um, last year we had to do all of our meetings on Zoom, which was fine, but we weren't able to give out our free food <laughs> and all that good stuff. So um, this year, make sure to check us out. Um, you can find us on Horns Link. Um, maybe Jane can send the link for Horns Link in there, but um, you can read more about us and follow us on Instagram and come meet us. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Sarah. I'll send the Horns Link link in just a second. Horns Link is basically like Facebook for student organizations at UT. So you can type in a keyword and find all of the organizations that are related to that. Um, but that was the last planned question I had. So I'm going to move to the Q&A box now. So if you have a question that you've been holding on to, send it and I'll probably read the ones that are most like liked first. So if you really want one answered, then give it a like. The first question I have, and this can be for anybody, is what is the difference between environmental engineering and environmental science? I would say environmental science is probably a lot more um, biology heavy and more like learning about like why, like how nature is and stuff like that. Whereas like engineering is like, or environmental engineering, we like learn about nature but we kind of learn like how to clean it like for example we learn how to like clean water and the chemistry that goes on in water whereas i guess environmental science more like think about the systems and don't really like try and think of solutions i think that's that would be my guess i don't know yeah i'll add something kind of i guess unique about ut is that our environmental science program is broken up into three colleges. So you can do environmental science through the College of Natural Sciences, which would probably be more of like a biological route. You can do it through the College of Liberal Arts, which is more of like geography based thing. We actually have a center called the Center for Geography and the Environment. So if you're interested in like population dynamics or something, um, and you can also do it through the Jackson School of Geosciences. So geology and that sort of thing. So there are lots of routes you can go with environmental science. Um, the next question I have is for Samia. Can you tell us a little bit about why you made the career pivot from traditional civil engineering to running your own leadership development company? Great question. So I was working in construction sites a lot. And one of the things that I saw was young engineers really struggling to communicate with a variety of other fields. Um, one of the problems we were facing is contractors not following safety rules. And in my head, I thought both of these parties want the same thing. They want their employees to be safe. So why is there this communication breakdown? And one of the things that we saw was when we, you know, some of the safety training that we were doing, it was very engineering language based and a lot of theories like, you know, this is why you have to choose certain equipment. We started relaxing the language and talking in more field speak. And instead of just using 
uh, PowerPoint presentations, we actually started modeling the behavior we wanted on site. And we saw that with very slight shifts in the way we spoke, in the way we communicated, we saw you know, a massive change in the safety records on site. And that kind of got me thinking about you know, what are some of the other ways in which we, you know, non-technical things that we can improve. Uh, I saw a lot of young professionals struggling with confidence or in a meeting, perhaps they have really great ideas, but they are the only women on the team, or maybe they're the only person of color on the team. And sometimes it's hard to speak up when no one looks or speaks like you. And I really, I really, I love engineering and I saw a lot of people moving out of engineering because of non-technical issues. And so I really wanted uh, to help these young professionals stay in engineering and love engineering as much as I do. And I think that's kind of what started, you know, I started to, you know, naturally shift um, the more that I saw, um, you know, the more I shifted. And I think also with engineering, you really learn a set of problems, you know, problem solving tools, right? And I thought, what if we applied the same things to non-traditional, you know, non-tech, non-traditionally technical things? And, you know, I try to bring an engineering approach to things like confidence, burnout, time management. And, you know, I, I love doing it. I feel like it's all connected. Awesome. Thank you so much, Samia. Um, okay, so our next question is, what kind of jobs can you get with a civil or environmental engineering degree? Um, I'll, you can get such a wide range of jobs, right? You can work in transportation. Uh, now there's a lot of modeling being done to, um, and you know, like there's collaborations between um, people in geography, people in urban planning, people in, you know, policy making, and they're trying to see, and I think there was a question about also how urban design plays into things like this. Um, engineers are trying to, you know, figure out how to make our neighborhoods and streets better and more integrated. So, you know, where people can use greener modes of transportation. Um, you can go into material sciences, you know, you can work at a lab, you can work, you know, in as a structural engineer, designing buildings, um, you can work um, as a water resources engineer, uh, and design things like retention ponds or, you know, flood management systems. So really, as civil engineers and architectural and environmental engineers, the world is your oyster. You can, there, you know, civil engineers are helping, you know, make civilizations exist. So as long as civilizations are there, you know, you, you won't be out of a job. Yeah, and just to add to that, I think also um, people should consider non-traditional civil engineering careers as well, because there's a lot of opportunities there. One thing I'm really trying to push because I because I'm doing it now and I think it's so cool is this whole field of product management or being like a data analyst or a product analyst. Um, that's pretty broad. I mean, they hire people from any engineering major. A lot of tech companies do. You don't have to have a software engineering degree to do product management. They look for really broad skill sets. So I really recommend looking into that, but there's also, you know, going into management consulting, you could go to law school, um, looking at opportunities like that. Uh, I think patent law is super important um, and they like to hire engineers for that as well. So um, also considering non-traditional careers, engineering skill sets fit really well because um, we kind of, you know, think different and have different training than other individuals. And I think in if you go to Web's YouTube channels, uh, they have a wide, you know, I've been on panels before where uh, people have gone into medicine or finance uh, and law, as Kelly was saying. And so, yeah, it's, it's a vast world out there. Thank you. It's nice to know that we have a lot of options, right? <laughs> um, so the next question is, when do... ARE students need a CAD computer 
and which ones do you think are best? Yeah, so um, this question, I don't know, kind of hard to answer, but um, the win, so you, I guess if you were definitely getting one, you know, before um, you come to UT or like, you know, right before, but you really don't start using like the programs until probably either your second semester of freshman year or your first semester of sophomore year. Um, and that's for a design class um, where they teach you AutoCAD and Revit and Rhino and different things like that. Um, as for which computer to get, um, there's a lot um, of options. Um, there's a lot of specs that you can look at. Um, I think the department, Civil Architectural Environmental, they have recommendations for like what specs you should have for your computer. Um, we can try to find that and send that information. Um, but <laughs> that's a little too specific to off the top of my head. But um, usually, but people do use Macs, that's a question we get a lot. Um, I personally use a Windows. I think it's a little bit easier, but you can use a Mac computer. Um, they have a virtual desktop, which allows you to access all those programs on a Mac or a Windows. And they also have um, desktops you can use um, at UT in the engineering building. So um, yeah, there's a lot of options you can have. Um, you don't really need, I've seen people get through it without like a, a really good laptop, but um, it can help just take a look at those requirements and see if that's an option for you. Great. Um, our next question, sorry, Maya. Our next question is, uh, how does urban design play a role in architectural and civil engineering? And before I pass this off to the panelists, I'll also mention uh, UT has a degree in urban studies, if that interests you. That's in the College of Liberal Arts, so you could double major or just do that if that is your interest. But yeah, I'll pass that question off to the panelists. Um, I could start speaking to this one. Um, so there's not an official like track for urban design or city planning um, for any of the majors, but um, civil engineering does have transportation engineering. Maybe that's kind of similar to what you're looking for, but um, you can definitely take electives in different departments to try to see um, if that's something you're interested in. You can um, look for internships in those kind of um, fields and uh, architecture. The architecture department has a few um, classes that you can take. So if you look around and definitely mention to your advisor that you're interested in that, they can probably point you to some relevant classes. If you're interested in looking at specific research, Dr. Pat in, and that's spelled B-H-A-T, uh, in the transportation department at UT does a lot of work uh, with this. Uh, so does Dr. Makamel. Um, urban design plays, you know, I was talking about it earlier, right? We are trying to move towards greener cities. Um, and so when you're designing roads, you know, how do you, um, how do you have neighborhoods spaced out? Do you use a mixed use neighborhood? Um, do you have a transit oriented development? Where do you place the bike lanes? All of these intersect with transportation engineering and you know, uh, city design and urban design. Um, uh, Austin is also a great city um, to you know, look at what they're doing. They have pilot programs in different neighborhoods. Uh, to see, you know, how much uh, mixed use they can uh, offer. Um, so I would, you know, I would suggest start looking at, um, you know, Dr. Bhatt's work uh, to see if there was some something there that really interested you. And previously for transportation engineers, they would, you know, sit at the corner of a road and like count, you know, the cars that are going, but now everything is, um, you know, we're modeling things, uh, you actually, um, model people's behavior to figure out how much transportation demand is on the road. And then city planning definitely comes into those models as well. Great, okay. Um, Sarah is typing an answer to an architectural question. So I'll move on to the next. It is what experiences in high school, like specific classes or maybe organizations, 
would prepare you well for a civil engineering major. And I'll also open that up to any major in this department. What do you think would prepare you well in high school? I would say like, I don't know, just like take some like uh, science classes if you can, like AP classes and stuff if you can. Um, I personally like didn't really like do anything super engineering related. Like I don't want people to be scared off thinking that they have to do stuff in high school. Like that's not the case. You will like learn what you need to know in college. Um, so I would just encourage like do what you want, honestly, in high school, do what interests you. Like don't try, I don't know. I don't know if my clubs, I remember my school had anything like super engineering related that would have helped me in college. I just think like, you know, I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> If you have the opportunity, I think it can be a really good idea to take um, like community college courses, maybe going into as the summer starting college, just so you can get some of those credits. I know for me um, at UT, I didn't really like to overload my schedule because I uh, get overwhelmed very easily <laughs> um, with coursework. And so I, I really like to have kind of four engineering and science classes max a semester and so in order to do that I typically had to like have some credits coming in or take community college classes during the summer so I'd recommend doing that if you're able to maybe like the summer going into college or um, you know take AP test uh, so you can get credit coming in so maybe look at some of those credit requirements as well I think that's really helpful um, additionally I think you know, I'm, most people that come to UT have done some kind of extracurriculars, but I think what's been most valuable or what was most value, valuable for me going into UT was having some experience with public speaking and speech and debate, just because, um, I, I don't know, I think that for me makes me feel a lot more comfortable speaking in my classes and doing group assignments and uh, kind of getting comfortable with that. So I, I found that really helpful. Um, but maybe that's that's just me as well, because I, I feel like that's a development area that I have. So um, it helps me a lot in college. Completely agree with Kellyanne. Um, and there is a Toastmasters group uh, in uh, UT Austin as well. I'd encourage you to join. Uh, and um, the community college is a great idea. If you can do writing courses, um, you know, when you start out, uh, in any, you have labs and, you know, uh, there is a heavy writing component to it as well. Uh, in civil engineering, I know the materials classes have uh, communications and writing component to it. So if you could take writing classes, that would, that will help you not only in UT, but for the rest of your life. Wonderful. I think that's all really good advice, but Really, I mean, take advantage of whatever you can at your high school, but there's not going to be any like requirement. You have to have, you know, built something to be an architectural engineer. No, you'll learn what you need to learn while you're at UT. Um, we have time for just a couple more questions. Uh, again, this can be for anybody. Were you interested in other majors besides what you chose and not just other majors, but other like fields in general? Um, for me, I initially kind of considered going into just architecture um, and not architectural engineering. Um, and the, the reason I didn't was <laughs> because they usually go for a lot longer, so like five to six year programs. Um, and then it's a lot of like very theoretical um, design prompts a lot of times. And so I kind of want to do something more concrete and um, more realistic, like something that you could actually build and not like <laughs> design this piece of fabric into like <laughs> a building, which is great. And some people can think like that, but my brain wasn't that um, like design in that way, like a little bit too theoretical, like I said, but um, yeah, that was what I considered. And um, UT does have a dual degree program of architecture and architectural engineering. It's a six year program. If you're really interested in that, um, I can talk more about that if y'all wanted. I think like Sarah, I, I took a lot of classes with architectural engineers. Um, and when I was working in uh, the construction um, industry, I worked daily with architects. So there has been times where I've wanted to um, 
uh, major in architecture or learn more about it. Uh, one of the things that I really love about architecture is they help to design spaces. Uh, one of my friends, um, she worked in a place that was called the Death Lab, and they literally created public spaces where people who have had a devastation in their life, they would go to those spaces and find time or healing, you know, you know, to reflect on, you know, what's gone on in their life. Um, you know, they were working on a project for uh, children who, you know, suffered abuse in their uh, early childhood and helping to create a safe space for them. And so things like that uh, really interested me. And so, yeah, I, I, I would love to learn more about architecture. For me, uh, another field, well, like I kind of my dream job, if um, I could do this, I guess I could in a way, but uh, the path to success is a little bit less clear to me than engineering, but I really love psychology. Like if I could have done my whole focus in college around psychology, I would have totally loved it. I just really didn't want to get a PhD um, <laughs> in psychology, so I decided to pursue civil engineering because, I mean, I really loved my transportation courses. Um, like we had talked about here, uh, that's very focused on psychology now and human behavior and how people make decisions. And so that was something that I really enjoyed. And I think a lot of that kind of plays into engineering with the nice intermix of like physics and math and science. You get a lot of that, those elements as well. But I, I just absolutely love like reading about psychology and human behavior. Yeah, I wanted to do geography, like human geography. And so like, I have taken some geography classes. They're kind of hard to get into if you're not a geography minor or major. Um, but yeah, so you can totally take classes like outside um, of your major if you have time or like for a credit, like if you know you have to get like a cultural flag, um, UT has like flags you need to get for each major and cultural diversity flag. Some of those are geography classes. Um, and so that's how you can like weave in some things that you're interested in that are not engineering related, which is also really nice because you take like four classes or five classes a semester. If you're taking like five engineering classes that might be a lot to deal with. So it's nice to just like have a break in there, um, you know? So yeah, you can definitely branch out. And yeah, I love geography. I did a humanitarian engineering certificate, which isn't really geography related, but there's like some things in there. Um, and I wanted to add a minor in geography, but I, I couldn't, so that's unfortunate. But yeah. yeah, again, not a civil architectural and environmental, but I am a big advocate of like adding or like tailoring your degree to what you are interested in. It's your like college experience. It can take as long as you want it to. You can take whatever classes you want, whether that means like adding things in, switching to a different major in or out of engineering, like get what you want out of the degree because um, you're really working for it. So you might as well get what you want. All right. So fantastic questions. All of them. I hope you got some good information out of it. We're coming to the end, so I'm going to ask all of our panelists just, uh, I guess, final words, maybe something that has been your like most like engaging or uh, satisfying experience in your time in engineering, something you've really loved about the entire program, um, and or any words of wisdom you have for all of our you know upcoming generation of engineers. I'll leave it open to all of you. I guess I can start. Um, I don't know. I'm like graduating in December, so maybe I'll get a little emotional in a second. But um, I would say like right now, when I think of like the most rewarding thing, I would say I took my senior design class last semester, um, which is just like one of your last classes that you have to take. And it's just a fun time because it's like all the people that you've like seen in all your classes, like you recognize everyone's faces and you work together in a group and like solve an engineering problem basically by yourself it's like with like minimal help from the professor and it's just like your first like kind of like i mean you do projects but it's your first project where you're like on your own kind of and i was able to do it like with my friends like we were able to make our own groups and it was just so fun and really rewarding to get a good grade and hear like industry professionals who came to watch our presentation be like wow i never even thought of this like y'all did a great job and like 
you know, it's rewarding to hear that your work and what you've been doing in college is actually like, can be applied to the real world, I guess. Um, and yeah, words of wisdom, just like enjoy college. Like obviously you're here to learn, learn your stuff and like try and get good grades, but also like, don't stress yourself out. Don't try and take like seven classes and like part-time job too. Like as much as you can, um, just like enjoy the moment and meet new people. Um, and yeah, like Jane said, college is what you make of it and make college like what you want. Like if you want to do a lot of research, go for it. Ask professors, like keep in touch with professors as much as you can and stuff like that. And also talk to older students. Older students know a lot. They have been through it. So get you an older uh, upperclassman who's your friend. <laughs> I think um, for me, oh, college was so, so long ago for me, but uh, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was participating in all the different groups uh, that, um, you know, at UT, I was a pal for the Women in Engineering program, and I also participated a lot in Equal Opportunity Engineering, as well as groups uh, outside. There's an anime club. I love anime. Um, so, you know, as uh, Pauline was saying, you know, enjoy your college experiences, um, you know, do your homework, take your classes, but also this is the time to broaden your horizon and, you know, you know, invest yourself in, you know, groups and, you know, movements or any social justice uh, issues that you really care about. Um, as far as words of wisdom would go, I would say make your decisions from a place of hope and joy and not from fear. Because when you allow fear to take over, you might, you know, you might think, oh, you know, I'll just take on all of these extra classes just to ensure I get a job. And, you know, life is unpredictable and have faith in yourself, have faith in your own abilities and in the program that you're entering and make your decisions based on what you like to do and not what you're afraid of happening in the future. Um, and I think, you know, if you can consistently do that, I think college will be a wonderful experience for you and you'll be replenishing your own energies and motivations. And, you know, when you go outside of college, you know, you'll get a job that you love um, and have energy to wake up every day and do your job. I can, I can go next. Um, I was trying to think of maybe a particular moment that I really enjoyed, but I feel like when I reflect back on college, which I mean, I graduated two years ago, I think I really miss and just cherish the environment of like learning. Um, I think it, you're still always learning in your career, but I think in college, it's really so much broader and you can focus on things that you just really enjoy that can shift a little bit when you're working for a company. I mean, you continue to learn, but usually at the end of the day, you're focused on kind of shareholder value. And that's kind of the ultimate goal. Is, I mean, particularly if you're working for a corporation. And I think I just miss in college where you're just focused on such broad idea sharing. And it's, I don't know, it, it was just, I really miss kind of like basking in that like learning environment. Um, and so I find that really interesting. I still get a lot of that when I go to conferences and stuff. Well, I mean, right now they're all like virtual conferences. Um, so, so really enjoy that part of it. And then I think in terms of advice, I would just say I was really hard on myself in school. And I think we talk a lot in the women engineering program about like imposter syndrome. And I just kind of want to reinforce like no one has it figured out. Like um, you're your professor doesn't have it figured out. The person interviewing you doesn't have it figured out. Oh, can y'all hear me okay? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, I froze for a second. But um, yeah, it's no one really has it all figured out. So don't be so hard on yourself and recognize that you have a lot of value to provide. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what I wanted to say is that I know a lot of people kind of are hard on themselves. So just just recognize that everyone feels that way in college so so yeah um we're short on time so i'll just make mine really quick i just have a word of wisdom which is to ask <laughs> like you'll never know what 
you can do unless you ask. Like if you're really passionate about architecture and you want to take some architecture electives, like ask your advisor, like, what can I do? How can I do this? Like geography and anything you're interested in and minors and like research and um, people are, are the advisors are great and they really want to help you and <laughs> they, they know a lot and they can do some magic sometimes. So make sure you ask them um, if you're really interested in something. I'll also go really quickly. I would just say, um, get involved in whatever you're interested in. I know that's kind of been mentioned, but like, um, just because it's not related to engineering doesn't mean that you don't belong there. Like, don't be intimidated by new things. Just do what you're passionate about. Wonderful, awesome advice from all of our panelists. Certainly need to hear some of it myself. So. Thank you all for sharing and all of our attendees. Thank you for being here. I hope you got a lot out of it. I'm going to send some links again. Again, that's our web YouTube channel. If you have more questions, the Fab Femmes role model database, go on there, find your role model and connect with them. And then last our camp questions, Google Sheet. So go on there, control F the word you're thinking about and then find questions and answers all about that. One last thing I'll send is the WEP email address. So if you have a question that's like specific to you and you want to get it answered directly by a WEP student, then you can email us there. Somebody will see it and respond to it. So that's all we have for you today. Thank you all so much for being here. And I hope you come next week, same time, same place. And we'll be talking about chemical engineering students like me. Yay. Thanks everyone for being here. Have a great weekend. Bye.